pay the price. Back in the dealer's den, will this iconic London skyline draw Tim into putting his hand in his know. pocket and it's parting with some cash? And you brought this picture clock in for me to look at today. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about how you acquired it? Well, it was left to me by my mother. It's been in the family for years. Mm. So um, I just thought I'd like to sell it now. So does it work, Beryl? Um, I don't know. You don't know? No. And does it chime? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it did work at one did time, work. yes. Right. Before I had it, yeah. So you've not looked after it very well then? Well, I have and I haven't, <laughs> yeah. And does it do anything else? Because sometimes they play music. These. Yes, it plays Home Sweet Home. Right. Does it still play Home Sweet Home? Well, you don't, I don't know, do know, you? No. You don't know. <laughs> well, you know, everyone knows what it is, don't they? Yeah, it's Big Ben, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And it's probably going to date from sort of, I would think, sort of like the 1910s, 1915s, that sort of period. Yes. Just by the style of the frame. And obviously, it's um, a nighttime scene, or you want to be posh nocturnal, they yeah, call it. That's right, yes. And then the, the little bits are highlighted here in Mother of Pearl down the side here, and obviously the moon. Um, it's called Gesso, this frame, which is like plaster work with the garland on the top. Um, it's different, isn't it? It is different, yeah. yeah. I don't know whether it's to everyone's taste. Oh. That's that's the thing, you know. Um, there's not a great deal other than that, and I can tell you, there were a lot of these were made in Germany. You know, the works oh, are German, yeah. yeah. You know, like the cuckoo clocks and yeah. that. They were sort of mass produced and, and brought over. So, I think originally it wouldn't have been an expensive item, really. I'm going to make you an offer. I don't necessarily know whether it's for me, but see what you think. Don't shout at me, Beryl. No, I won't. <laughs> 20, 40 pounds. Oh, no. You No, couldn't part for that, no. Because it's different, it's quite... Well... You know, I think it is. It is and it isn't. I mean, the, the, I wouldn't say they were common. But I have seen them before. There was a brown one as well made. Right. This a is brown... the blue one, yeah. The, All right. And there so was a brown one. This is blue period, Big yeah. Ben, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> Forget That's... a Picasso, this is blue period, yeah, it, Big Ben. The, the blue one looks nicer than the brown, because right. I've seen the brown. Oh, have you seen the yes. brown one? Yeah, right. in a cafe, yeah. £45 pounds barrel. I know it's blue period. Not another five? No. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to say. Well, you could go to auction, you could take the money. £45, Beryl. Yeah, deal. We've got a deal. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very yeah. much. What are you going to do with £45? I don't know yet. Brown period, Big yes, Ben? Yes, probably, yes. I think I will. Coming up, a sparkling item arrives at Helen's table. It is a little Bobby Dazzler, a cracker. You need more money. Let me see. Will Helen's offer come up to the mark? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Denby in North Wales. It's been non-stop bargaining and there's no let-up as the final deal of the day has caught the eye of Dave and auctioneer Simon Bauer. But will the gem that's arrived at Helen's table bring a sparkle to her eye? What well, can you tell me about this ring? Well, I inherited it uh, six years ago from my aunt. Um, I believe from the date of it, she wouldn't have bought it new. It's a big diamond. Yes. Mm. Bigger why, the better. Why are you not keeping it? Uh, well, that, I can't actually get it onto my even my little finger. Yes, it's, it's a tiny it's, little yeah. ring. But that so, could be enlarged. It could be made bigger. It could, but uh, I think I'd be worried about wearing it and losing it because I'm not very good at things I like that. I see. You'd be afraid to lose it. Yeah. No daughters to wear it? No? No, no girls? No children. No. Oh dear, so you're going to yeah. sell it? I think so. Mm. Yes. So what are you going to do with the money? Uh, probably buy something else to keep in, in, in memory of my aunt. Another little investment? Yeah. Mm. Well, it's a nice stone, nice big diamond over a carrot, and it's... The clarity of it's quite good, as far as I can see. 
I'm no diamond expert. I don't see any inclusions in the stone. Now, Simon, a very nice ring. I would describe that as a little bobby dazzler. Now, when are you going to estimate that? Personally, I can see it at 12 to 1500 would be a, a, good, a good base estimate. Yeah. OK, independent valuers are pretty similar. They're kind of 12 to 1400, something in that region. I get a feeling, looking at this, at £1,500, it would be a snip. I need to keep an eye on this deal and make sure that comes to you in auction. I can see two people fighting over this. Let's see what our dealer puts on the table. Do you think I'll have enough money in my purse to buy it? I'm sure we have. You think so? All, all we ladies like diamonds. We certainly do. Well, let me see. One. Two. Three. Four hundred pounds. I'm going to have to dig a bit deeper. Is that right? <laughs> Quite a bit deeper. Five hundred. Six hundred. Seven hundred. Eight hundred. Nine. Nine fifty. There's a thousand pounds. Thousand pounds. No messing. Thousand pounds on the table. What's your feelings about that, Simon? It's, it's a good start, but retail is a lot, lot more, isn't it? So I think there's room to move on. I think, in fairness, to look after the seller's interests, good start at £1,000, but we know it's worth a lot more money than that. And I need to get in there and tell our seller. What do you think? Well, I've walked in here at this time because there's a flurry of money come onto the table. And before we start making decisions, let me tell you a few things about your diamond ring right. and what our independent values on the auctioneer say. You've got a stone here which is about 1.2 carats. It draws a little bit of colour. You'd call that probably champagne. Right. It's a South African diamond, probably Edwardian, or certainly early 20th century. It's well cut, well polished, and there are no inclusions in there. It's the kind of diamond that they are saying today, our independent valuers, they're all kind of 12 to 1,500, 12 to 1,400. Mm. I still think 1,400 pounds, 1,500 pounds is cheap for that diamond. And the reason I say this, if you went to a jeweler shop and you wanted to buy that today, you wouldn't get through the door with 5,000 pounds, in my opinion. So, I'm gonna say, it's well worth getting near the top estimate, the £1,500. But it wouldn't surprise me if a private buyer or one or two private buyers would compete against each other to own that diamond. It is a little bobby dazzler, a cracker. You need more money. Thank you. Well, that's what we like to hear. <laughs> well, that's what you like to hear. Yes. No, it is a yeah. nice ring. Now, should I up my offer? You see, you've got to remember, too, that if you get the upper estimate at auction, it's going to be a little bit off for commission. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to think yeah, about yeah. that. So, I'm not sure if I want to put any more money on the table, and I think I'll stick with my £1,000. I'll just leave it at a clean bid for that. But, of course, the choice will have to be yours. You've heard what David's advice was, yep. and you've heard my opinion. Yep. So, what do you think? Well, thank you very much for your offer, much appreciated, but I think I'm going to take the ring to auction. Well, I do think that's the right decision. Yes. I think you will do well in auction. I think this ring could be fought over. I yep. can see it on some little girl who's getting engaged, and it'll look fabulous. Yes, I hope you do sure really will. well. Oh, thank you and very it's much. It's a good decision, yes. the right decision. Thank you. Helen just wasn't prepared to put down more money. I think I'll stick with my thousand pound. I'll just leave it at a clean bid for that. OK. But will Jane reap the rewards of taking the risk? Let's find out. Why did you turn a thousand quid down? Well, it, as, as it was been mentioned, you know, it is, it is a good diamond. Yes. And I just thought it needed a little bit more money added well, to that. Well, I think you're right. It's here in the sale room with a 12 to 1400 pound estimation. And you've got a £1,300 reserve. Yes. It's worth £1,300. And I think there's a very good chance there'll be somebody here who will recognise quality. Let's see if I'm right. It's coming up now. Beautiful ring, isn't it? Beautiful stone. Start my own him. 1.2 carat. Where are we? 1,500. 1,500. 1,200 to start me then. 
Well, you like then, 800 bit at 800 bit. 800 bit for a beautiful ring at 800, 850, 900, 950. At 950 bit, I'll take a thousand now then. At 950, 1000. At 1000. That's what you were offered on the dealer's day. 1150, 12, 1250. That's better. 13. That's the reserve. At 13, the reserve. At 1300 bit, I'll take another 50. At 1300, on the market mine. At 1,300, is there 50 quickly and sold? 1,300 pounds, right on the reserve. We've got 130 pounds to take off. I make that 1,170 pounds. What's your reaction? Oh, I'm very pleased. It is a beautiful ring. Yeah. And at 1,300 pounds under the gavel, take away the auctioneer's commission, mm. and the real deal is 1,170 pounds. Now that's sparkling. A great result for Jeff trying to work out what section of Russian silver and sold it for 250 pounds. Even after Mike's reluctance to offer more for the oil painting. Well, I don't want to give much more for the picture because I don't think it's worth much more. He sold it unrestored to a picture dealer for 650. Finally, Tim was so keen to get rid of Blue Period Big Ben, he sold it for £20. And even though he paid over the estimate for the Austrian bronze, he sold it for £770. If you'd like to get the real deal for your antiques and collectibles, log on to our website at itv.com to find out when we're visiting your area. Come along to the show and maybe you could be a happy seller too. <laughs> We've had a cracking day here in the sale room. There's been lots of excitement, lots of bidding and lots of buying. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.